By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back to Leowarder, the Netherlands, where we continue our series of the Often Troll Cup number 5. We are here in the semi-finals. This is episode number 10 of this glorious tournament. And in that tournament, we're going to watch a Swede play against a Finn. We have Svante, who is on a fantasy zoo deck. It's blue, red, and green. He takes on a blue, red, Atok that's being piloted by Antti from Finland. So we've got a Scandinavian battle on our hands. And the winner of this battle will advance to the finals. Oh man, this, this, this promises to be something. Now, before I jump into the deck deck of both of these killer decks, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to skip the deck deck section Go to the games straight away. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So just click on MTG Games. You get straight into the action. And in that same description below, you can also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. So if you have a moment, please visit patreon.com slash Timmy Talks to find out how you can sponsor the YouTube channel. So uh, it already starts for $1 a month, by the way. So it might be worth checking it out and I would be very grateful. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm going to continue with uh, the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of Svante, blue, red, and green fantasy zoo. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Svante, right? So it's three colors, it's blue, red, and it's green. I've called it fantasy zoo. I'm not sure if that's the right title for it. Feel free to completely disagree with my title. The reason I did it though, is because I see a lot of low casting cost creatures that are very, very efficient, you know, pretty good stats for their for their value. I mean, Curdape, classic, of course, one red to cast is one, one, which gets plus one, plus two if you have a forest. So it's basically a two, three for one red mana. That's insane value. And of course, it's surrendered if reads one blue and two for a three, four flyer in the air. You know, that's... That's pretty insane. But when we're looking at the rest of the deck, we see a lot of components that you also see in a counter burn deck, right? Especially the burn component. Only two counter spells, mana drain and counter spell. Uh, but a lot of burn. Four psionic blasts. And we're seeing that so often these days. I remember when people would just play one psionic blast or maybe two. But in these decks, you know, these very aggressive decks, you just want to pack four, right? You want to attack with your smaller creatures and finish it with burn. And it's very possible with this deck. Four lightning bolts, four chain lightnings, four psionic blasts. I mean, that's a lot of firepower. And then, of course, you've got all your cheap creatures. We already mentioned the Curd Ape and the Surrender Pafrit, but we also have Argovian Pixies. Fantastic against Suchis, fantastic against the Mistress Factories that are also in this deck, by the way, four Mistress Factories. And then we have those Scavenger Folks and that one of Shatter. So, yeah, it's and of course, of course, the blue power, you know, a deck has to start with the blue power when we're at this stage in the game, right? Um, so this is in incredibly strong and this deck is in the hands of an incredibly good player. So it's going to be a tough match, but I think the deck of Ante, uh, of Ante, I should say, uh, is also packed pretty heavy. Talking about that, let's take a look at the deck of Ante. And here we see the deck of Ante. So maybe this is the best Atok deck around, right? Atok is really a creature that a lot of different decks are brewed around the Atok. You also see, for example, Atok and Robots. So it's always interesting for me, you see Atok like more and more mono red, like super aggressive based. So it's always interesting for me to see how many Atoks are people playing in an Atok deck and what are they building around the Atok. And in the case of, of Anti, he's playing a full play set of Atok. So this is a genuinely, you can genuinely call this an Atok deck, right? But if you're looking at, at the other cards, again, a lot of burn. Three Psionic Blasts, two Chain Lightnings, four Lightning Bolts, and a Fireball. So a lot of aggression. And then we also have four Surrender Befreeds for Auntie as well. We've got that Black Splash with Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. And then that one-off white card, the Balance. So really having those cards to get back into the game. I think Balance is really good in this deck. Because you're playing with a lot of instances that are cheap to cast. You're playing with a lot of artifacts that the Balance doesn't take into account. And, you know, I think with a deck like this, your creatures probably, when they hit the table, or they win you the game, or they're gone pretty quickly. So, yeah, Balance is, is kind of a nice card. The only thing, the only reason that, that Balance doesn't fit into the bill is it, it's more, I guess, more a defensive card, right? It, it, it gets you back from behind. And this deck probably will go so fast that in a lot of times you have a Balance in hand where maybe you'd rather have a Lightning Bolt or maybe that fourth Psionic Blast. But still, I mean, I get the inclusion. 
uh, it, it'll get you back. And when we're looking at the artifacts, by the way, we see three Ankh of Mishras. So I've always liked this classical combination between Black Visor and Ankh. Well, actually liked, but I kind of, I, I like the synergy. Let me put it that way. I, I don't like to play against it, don't get me wrong. Uh, Black Vice, of course, a card that punishes the player for having too many cards in hand. So for each card above four, you take a damage. If you have seven in hand during your upkeep, you take three damage. So what happens when your opponent plays a Vice? You want to empty your hand. But then there's also the Ankh of Mishra, the artifact for two that says whoever plays a land takes two damage. So when you've got both on the battlefield, it's really difficult for your opponent. It's like a catch-22. I mean, if you're going to play out your land, you take two damage. If you don't play it out, you take damage from the Vice. It's a problem. Now, the thing is in... Old school magic, because so many people, especially when you hit that top eight, have access to the Moxon and, and to all that stuff. The 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 Ankh of Mishra is not that that powerful anymore, and and so is the Black Vice. So those cards actually get less powerful the higher you get into into a tournament. That being said, a lot of players play with Time Twister. A lot of players play with um, with Wheel of Fortune, and a lot of decks really don't. They love to draw cards, and they don't like cards that kind of punishes them for doing that. You know, of course, Underworld Dreams is the perfect example for that. But Black Vice kind of is a soft thing. It also does it, if, if you know what I mean, if you can like kind of understand what I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying to say. So it's, it's nice to see. And of course, when you're playing Atog, and I have the same experience with Sage of Letnam, if you have an artifact that no longer, um, you know, fil fulfills any purpose in the game, for example, a very late Vice, if you know that the twist is already out, the wheel is already out, you can still feed it to the Atog. I mean, the same thing goes to for an Ankh of Mishra. If, if all the lands are already pl played out and your opponent is probably not going to play out any more lands, you can still use that Ankh of Mishra to kind of boost your Atok. And talking about Ankh of Mishra, there is a card in the sideboard that's actually really good at kind of resetting your Ankh of Mishra because you're at this stage in the game, let's say, where, where your opponent has played out enough lands, doesn't need to play any lands out anymore. Then you can cast your Armageddon, right? So there are two Armageddons in the sideboard, which I think, again, is really good in combination with Ankh because then your opponent has to rebuild, has to start playing out those lands, but maybe your opponent is so low on life, they can no longer do it. And you kind of have your opponent in a lock that way, which is which is pretty cool. Looking at the sideboard, uh, we also see Red Elemental Blast. So I assume those are coming in against the uh, Surrender Befreits of... Um, of Svante, and then we also see some more Swords to Plowshares. I think they're probably also going to come in because you're going to be under pressure playing against that deck, right? So you just want to get rid of the threats as quickly as you can. So those are probably the main cards that are going to come in. We also see Blue Elemental Blast, another useful card. I think overall, he's got a pretty good sideboard, actually, to play against this uh, this deck of Svante, now that I look at it. Anyway, uh, this is the deck of um, Anti. We looked at the deck of Svante, and that only means one thing. We are ready to go to the semifinals of the Often Troll Cup. Have fun! Game number one, here we go. Look at that Anti starting here on the play with the Tundra into the Black Vice. He's playing the Blue-Red Atok deck, also with some white and black in it in the form of Demonic Tutor. Uh, Mind Twist, he's playing Balance, and here we see uh, Svante playing his first spell, uh, Chain Lightning. Oh, look at this opening! Black Lotus as well, playing the Argovian Pixies. He's playing a blue-red-green uh, fantasy zoo deck, so with Surrender Perfreets, a lot of low-to-the-ground creatures like Curdape as well. So, uh, a lot of action from both of these decks. Here we see a City of Brass. There is another Vice, but the hand's pretty empty already here from Svante, so no damage for him, attacking for two. Putting Anti on 15, there's a Curdape. Curdape is still a 1-1 one, one, though, because there's no forest in play, unfortunately, for Svante. Perhaps that's coming next turn. We can kind of see the hand there. I believe Svante has a counter spell in hand. And ooh, that time twister is looking really good. That's gonna refill his hand. That's fantastic. Here for Svante. Let's see what can Anti do. I mean, he's got more cards in hand, so a Time Twister would be bad for him. Although, of course, Anti does have to double Vice. So if he's lucky, here we see a Surrender of Freed, so no counter spell because no two blue open here for uh, for Svanta. And I, th I think the Surrender is quite nice. Can block the Curdape and the Argovian Pixies. Can he find a Mana Source and, uh, and jam that uh, Time Twister? That's the question. Okay, there's the mana source. Now the question is, is he going to play it? No, he's not passing the turn. Probably thinking about the double vice. Knows if he goes up to seven, doesn't find any moxen. 
You'll take six damage the next turn against the burn deck. That is very risky. So Svante choosing here not to play it out. It's a little bit too bad for Svante that he doesn't have two blue to cast that counter spell in hand. Anti in the tank here at the moment. Can of course attack with the Surrender Befreed, but then Svante can, uh, can have a free attack with the Kurdip, the Pixies, and potentially two Mishra's Factories as well, so that's a lot of damage. Anti going through his hand, hasn't played out a land yet. There's the Plateau, tapping three. Okay, there's a Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, that is really good. Time Twister gone, land gone. Had a Taiga there in hand. That he could have played out to pump the Kurdip, chose to go for the factory instead. Which I think is the right decision, but I mean, this is not, not good here for, for Svante because next turn he uh, has to deal with the double vice. There's the pass here, not even the attack. Want to keep the surrender on blocking duty also makes sense. And look at that, Svante dropping to 11 here, 6 damage from the vices. That is bad news. Now he has to empty his hand. I mean, his deck potentially is really good at emptying the hand, so there should be possibilities here. We see some blue cards, some green cards, some red cards. Of course, he's taking his time here. Seven cards in hand, well, eight actually after the draw, so a lot of decisions to make. What land to play, what creatures to play, perhaps Psionic Blast on the uh, Surrendip, if he has it in hand, of course, could be an option for him as well. I believe I see some Surrendip of Freets there in the hand of Swant, if I'm not mistaken. So could also go for a Surrendip, but then again, Surrendip also hurts him. He's already on 11. It is, it is tough, you know, when you're playing against these, these decks with so much direct damage, it goes so quickly. And these Vices are really doing work here for Anti. Uh, in the deck deck, I kind of thought that maybe the Vices wouldn't be that useful because Svante can empty his hand so quickly. But of course, the draw sevens really changed that for, for Anti. I mean, the Black Vice kind of turns your Wheel of Fortune and, and Time Twister into a direct damage spell almost. So Svante is still looking at his cards here, eight in hand. He needs a really good turn. That's for sure, you know, he's really behind. There's Tropical Island, meaning the Kurt Ape is now a 2-3. I mean, he could attack with the Ape or Govian Pixies. If he has, for example, Chain Lightning or Bolt in hand, then he could do a two for one. Not ideal, but sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. Could also go for a Surrender of Freet to block the Surrender of Anti. Problem is, it does hurt you during your upkeep. I believe he's got another Kurt Ape in play, which is kind of easy for him to cast. Exactly. You, you want to empty your hand as well. There he goes. Surrender so and Kurt Ape. So I believe he's now in five cards in hand. Passing the turn back to Auntie. So Auntie will drop to 12, if I'm not mistaken. It looks like Svante is still considering a few moves. Is he considering an attack? He could, of course, go for the Kurt Ape and Pixies. Would lose one of the two creatures, but he would deal them two damage. It looks like he's passing the turn in on end step. Are we going to see a Bolt? I mean, if it's a Bolt, I would be tempted to do a Bolt to the face, actually. Put him on put him on 8. I mean, he's got the Surrender. He's going to go to 7. He's going to go to 6. He's in double Bolt range. And he's got five in hand as well, right? So he's going to take two more damage from the Vices also. Exactly, to the face. To the dome. So Svante is dropping to eight. Looking bad for him. Anti dropping to 11. Now remember, Svante, of course, also packed to the tooth. Or teeth. Do you say tooth or teeth? Anyway, he's, he's packed with a lot of direct damage in his deck. Auntie here going through his hand. A lot of options for him as well. And remember, he, he's got the double vice, so I believe Swant is going to take two damage from the, both of the vices because he's got five cards in hand, if I'm not mistaken. He would drop to six, then take a damage from Surrender, would drop to five. So if he has double bolt, it, it could be enough to seal the deal. Yes, yeah, Svante, they're taking a moment. Remember, this is the semifinals of the biggest old-school Magic tournament in the Netherlands. 
We've got around 100 players playing for the title. Only four remain. And two of those four are playing here right now. There's a Mishra's factory. It looks like we're going to see some action. Tapping two lands, tapping three, another surrender perhaps. Psionic Blast here to the face. Oh, oh, oh. keeps getting worse. The only good news here though is that uh, Anti is taking uh, two damage from his Psionic Blast. Hasn't taken that by the way. A Fireball. So I believe Anti should be on eight or am I missing something? And of course taking a damage. Uh, yeah, because he took a damage from his own City of Brass. Exactly, I believe Swanti is mentioning that now. Yeah, I think the life totals are not accurate. Yeah, he should be on 8. Okay, that's good. So it's really good that the players are taking a moment here to discuss the situation. Especially here in the semifinals. So now there's the untap. He's going to go to 2, then the vice. He's done. He is done for. Yeah, it goes so quickly. But th the interesting thing about this matchup is that goes for both decks. Like, Anti could also get in this scenario, in this situation as well. But the Vices really did it here. But now Anti is on the draw and no longer on the play. So I wonder if he's going to keep the Vices in. Probably, but they won't be as good. Although they still do dynamite work with those draw sevens. Anyway, we simply don't know yet. Talking about that, we're going to give these players a moment to uh, sideboard and then we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So, ooh, look at that Anti taking a mulligan, going down to six cards. Svanta on the play after losing the first game, starting with a Volcanic Island. What will happen next? There's a Mishra's Factory, Mox Sapphire. Tapping the Mox, one blue floating. Are we going to see an Ancestral Recall? Nope, we're going to see a Soul Ring instead. Tapping the Soul Ring, and there's a Vice. Passing the turn, so the Vice, there's a Bolt. Vice not going to do much, four cards in hand for Svanta. So I'm not taking any damage. There's the Taiga. Tabbing it here. Okay, there's a the Chaos Orb passing the turn. So leaving a small window open for Anti to destroy the orb. Has one Shatter in uh, in his deck, of course. So there is a small chance, but no red source. There's the Tundra and attacking for two here. Svanta dropping to 18. Ooh, and look at that Ancestral Recall in hand there. That's pretty nice for Svanta. First going to go for the Surrender Pafrit, passing the turn. Being patient here. There's a Psionic Blast on end step, taking care of the Surrender. Does mean two damage for Anti, dropping to 15. 18 still here for Svante, expecting the attack with the Factory. Is Svante going to drop to 16 or does Anti have better options? There he goes. Svante dropping to 16. Volcanic Cast, pass turn. Slight problem for Svante here is the double blue open for... Uh, Look at that Ancestral Recall. I wonder if he's got counter back if he does not. I mean, although I can really see the hand, but what I wanted to say, the double blue was looking kind of risky. You know, that means that Anti could potentially cast a, a Red Blast or a counter spell. Anyway, there's the Argovian Pixies by Svanta passing the turns. Looking quite good for Svanta here. Okay, there's the Swords to Plowshares, which is not too bad for Svanta because you go up in life. There's the attack for two again. So it looks like he's going to drop to 16. There's a regrowth in hand there, blue elemental blast in hand. What else? Time walk perhaps? That other blue card, not quite sure. Perhaps uh, Svante are thinking about flipping the Chaos Orb here on the Mishra's factory. That's exactly what he does. So he's going to flip here on the factory. Understanding the value of life. I think this is a good decision. Ah, oh, beautiful flip, Svante. Well done. And I mean, it looks so easy, but when you have to flip in a semi-finals, I mean, that is tense, you know? Anyway, let's see what Svante can do. Has a regrowth in hand as well, so could go regrowth, ancestral recall, play ancestral recall. But is that the best play? What else? Does he have any pressure there in the hand? Going through his card so quickly, looks like he's going to cast a regrowth. 
Got a bolt in hand there as well, I believe. I mean, he's, he's probably trying to read what Antti has in his hand. There's the regrowth. I believe only one card for Antti, by the way. On the Ancestral Recall, probably going to play out the recall here. Nope, passing the turn. And then Antti picking up a second card. I mean, things, things are looking good here for Svante. He's got more cards. He's got the Ancestral Recall in hand. There's the pass. There it is. Are we going to see a red Elemental Blast? Nope, we're not. And remember, of course, Svante does have the blue Elemental Blast to respond to a red Elemental Blast. Here we see a Bolt on end step. Because remember, Antti still has that Vice. So, five cards in hand, taking a damage from the Vice, dropping to 17. There's a Scavenger Folk. So, it could play out the Scavenger Folk. I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer. Chain Lightning also in hand. Chain Lightning here to the face. Auntie dropping to nine. Probably gonna see the Scavenger Folk here from the dark. A 1-1 one, one creature. One green and tap. Sacrifice, destroy target artifact. There's the Scavenger Folk. I mean, can you imagine, by the way, how good Scavenger Folk would be if you don't have to tap it to use its ability? There's a Time Walk. Are we gonna see a Red Elemental Blast or a Counterspell? It looks like we're not. Auntie allowing it. There's the attack for one. It's gonna drop to eight. And the only thing that Svante is missing here is like a Curd Ape or a Serenip, like some more pressure. A Factory would have been nice. There's a Tropical Island passing the turn. So we've got a Shatter, we've got a Time Twister in hand for Auntie, but do you really want to play it? A Mana Drain. So there's no, there's no Time Twister, that's probably a Mana Drain. It's hard for me to see though. So we've got a Shatter and a Blue Elemental Blast in hand. It's hard to see the third one. There's just a pass from Auntie. Gonna drop to seven now. There's another Chain Lightning, could go for the Chain, put Anti here on 4. Playing the Chain, I mean, Anti could send the Chain back to kill the Scavenger Folk, but of course doesn't do it because then Svante can send it back again and put Anti on 1. Wow, and Anti really not picking anything up here, just taking the damage, not finding anything useful apparently, dropping to 3. I wonder what's in his hand. Pick up another card, three cards in hand, I believe. Are they all three completely useless? That is the big question. There's the pass. Another attack, gonna drop to two. And he's gotta do something, right? Is he gonna play a side blast here on the scavenger folk? That's exactly what he does, yeah. You don't wanna do it, but sometimes you gotta do the things you don't wanna do, but I think it's too little too late. Are we going to see some Bernie from Svante to finish it here in game number two? Exactly. Anti is dead. And that means it is a 1-1. One, one. I love this. We are going to go to game number three. Game number three. Here we go. So it's Anti on the play here. 1-1. One, one. Often Troll Cup semifinals. The winner will advance to the finals. Look at that again. A vice. I'm really finding a lot of vices here. Looks like uh, Svante took a, uh, a mulligan here because he went down to six. So just taking two damage instead of three. So he's on 18, playing a Volcanic Passing to turn. He's got a Red Elemental Blast there in hand, a Bolt. Bolt could he potentially be played at the end step. Exactly, doesn't want to take more damage than absolutely necessary. So Anti dropping to 17, Anti not playing out anything. We haven't seen a single ATOG, by the way, from, uh, from Anti. Perhaps he boarded them out. Could be. So let's see. Is Svante going to take some more damage here? Oh, he did. He took a damage. Going to play out a Taiga. Passing the turn. And step Bolt. So a lot of bolting to the dome from both players. Svante already on 14. And uh, he, needs, uh, he needs some creatures. Like a Kurde would be nice. There's a Bolt again on end step. Wow. So lots of Bolts. Bolt number three here of game number three. And both players just uh, just passing, not doing that much. There's a scavenger folk. So 
So that could be uh, an option here. There's a Mishra's factory. Surrendip also in hand, going for the scavenger passing the turn. Having red elemental blast in hand as well. Let's see if Anti wants to do anything here on end step. Nope, he's gonna draw for turn. Let's see what he can do. I believe he missed a land drop last turn. But of course he does have the Mox and his deck doesn't need that uh, that much mana anyway. Tapping the Plateau here. Is he considering burning exactly Chain Lightning on the Scavenger? I mean, it's understandable you need to think about it, but I guess you really want to protect your Pearl as well. Perhaps your Vice also if you're drawing to a draw 7 later. Remember, the Vices have been really, really good at game 1 for Anti. There's a Surrendip. Okay, it's, it's, it's looking good here for Svante. Are we going to see a Swords though? No, a Red Elemental Blast there, countering the uh, Surrender Perfrit. It does mean Anti dropped to 13 because he used the uh, City of Brass. There's another pass, Factory being played by Anti. And Svante here going for the Trop, attacking with double Factory. Remember, his Factory still has Summoning Sickness, so if he blocks it, it's going to be a trade. Cannot tap it to pump itself because of the Summoning Sickness. And I wonder... Yeah, he is going to animate, he is going to offer the trade here. Are we going to see a Bolt? Yeah, we're also going to see a Bolt. So that means both Factories here are gone for Svante. And Anti here wanting to pump his own factory, but it's not possible. Of course, it still had summoning sickness. So there's the pass. Swan to 14, Anti 13. But this is quite a blow for Swan to losing both of the factories here because this, I mean, factory can be so good in these matchups. Tapping three, taking a damage, going to 12, playing the surrender of Freak. Now remember, Svante does have a Red Elemental Blast. Probably want to wait with playing it out until after the upkeep. Did Anti first take a damage? He will go to 11 and then plays the Red Blast. Ooh, Lotus in hand there. Could go Lotus, play Suchi. Pass and still have enough mana for the Red Blast. I think that's his line of play here. There we go. Beautiful signed Lotus, by the way. Passing the turn, taking a damage, and then we're going to see a Red Blast. Does he have an answer? No, he does not. Ooh, it's looking really good here for Antti. Sorry for Svante. Antti is kind of uh, in trouble here. First things first, though. Find a solution to the Suchi. I mean, Svante has no cards in hand anymore. Three cards still for, for Antti. Yeah, there we go. So he's got the solution. Now he's two cards up. I mean, this is such an interesting game three. It has been a very interesting game thus far. Svante going up to 18, Anti passing, two cards for him, one card, both players kind of in top decking mode here. There's another Plateau passing the turn, Green Geyser in hand, would have been really nice with the Lotus. There's the Ruby passing the turn. Let's see, okay, and here's enough mana, oh, are we going to see a Red Elemental Blast? If he has it, he's got to play it, right? He's, he's got to play it. You cannot allow Svante to draw three cards. I mean, you can, of course, but unless he's got to draw seven, if he has to draw seven, he could consider allowing it. He is allowing it. Wow, does that mean that he doesn't have a Red Elemental Blast and pretends to have one? I mean, that could be the case as well, because I'm sure if you have a Red Elemental Blast, you would play it here on the Brain Geyser. Anyway, let's see what Anti can do. Tapping the Pearl, tapping the Plateau. I see going to play an Atok. Hey, there's the Atok. I was wondering for a moment, did he board them out? Because I didn't. we didn't see them at all. And he's got four in his deck, right? Anyway, would you see a Chain Lightning? So he could play a Chain here in the main. I mean, it looks like the Brain Geyser didn't really give Svante much to work with. I believe I saw a Chain and two lands. Could be wrong, of course. Yeah, two lands there and a the Chain Lightning, not great. I would consider playing the Chain here on the Atok, I don't know. 
you would then force Auntie to perhaps you know, put his pearl or vice into it. But it's understandable that Svante needs a moment here. I mean, he was, it was going quite well for him when that brain guys are resolved. But then, of course, if you draw like Lance in that one chain, it's just not that great. And this is a very, very close match. There's a tie guy in the pass. So choosing not to play the chain. Oh, there's another Mox. I mean, that Mox jet is just looking so yummy for the ATOC. And of course, Anti knows how to play with the ATOC, right? He's been doing it the entire day. Knows when to start sacking artifacts. I believe that was a soul ring for Svante. That's bad. I mean, what Svante really wants here is... Is a draw seven. Even though there's a vice. Gonna drop to 16 here. There's the Mox Jet. Are we gonna see a, ooh, another, another ATOC. I said, are we gonna see Demonic Tutor, but it's an ATOC. Yeah, and now it's starting to look really bad here for Svant. I mean, he's, his, his top deck's really bad at the moment. Needs some more luck here. And also his deck is full of, of one for one trades and, and he kind of needs a card that makes a difference. Doesn't play with Fireball, for example. Like the fireball would be quite interesting. He could try to uh, to kill both Atox here with the fireball, kind of force Anti to make difficult decisions. This is kind of nice though. This Kurt Ape, although it's a yeah, it is a two three, so that's kind of nice. Atox are one two, of course. So if he blocks with the Kurt Ape, he's forcing Anti to to start sacking some stuff. Or are we going to see a quick bolt here to the ape? Okay, a blue elemental blast that works as well. Takes a damage here from the city of brass. Going to go down to 10. Yeah, the hand of Svante is looking so bad. Soaring land, chain lightning. And uh, two cards there for Anti as well there in his hand. There we see a soaring in the pass. Going to draw for turn. Can attack for two here. Put Svante on 14. I wonder at what point he will start sacking his artifacts. Counting the lands here, perhaps worried about a fireball. Three cards in hand for Anti. There's the attack for two. So we see Svante drop to 14. There's another City of Brass. Passing the turn. Oh man, this game. This game. So much at stake here. The finals. That's what they're playing for. To reach that spot in the finals. There's a Library of Alexandria. And really, really bad top decks here for Svante. And that's of course great news here for Antti. Sweden versus Finland. It's looking mighty good for Finland. 1-1. One, one, game number 3. Anti on 10, Svante on 14. But those Atox are doing work, and I guess we're here in the end step. Anti is considering some moves, I guess. Gonna use his City of Brass. And two more to play a Psionic Blast. So that means he would go to 7. Ooh, and putting Svante on 10. Is he planning on finishing it this turn? He's got three artifacts, so that equals six points of damage. Together with the two power of the Atox means eight damage. He would go down to two. Oh, and you can see Auntie here thinking, does he have a bolt in hand, for example? That could win him the game. Of course, Auntie doesn't know that Svante has nothing to go for. I mean, he's got a chain lightning that soars through his speed, cannot use anything, cannot do anything. There's the attack, it seems. Into the red zone with the Atox, or not. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer, isn't it? But then the question is, are you going to sack your artifacts? Is this the moment? It's always a gamble. If Svante has that bolt, he can start doing stuff in response.
Auntie rethinking again. I mean, I would, you know, put those hate ducks in the red zone, do it. You want to attack with them. The question is, are you going to sack the artifacts? That's the big question. I kind of, I kind of think so since he played that Sionic Blast so aggressively. Right? I mean, that, that was costing him three lives as well. I mean, he's on seven, which is quite low. You don't, you don't want to give Svante another turn. And I think Svante is pretending to have something in hand, hoping that it will make Auntie decide not to start sacking the artifacts. There's the sack Black Vice. So we've got a 3-4 and a 1-2. That means four damage. He would drop to six. Now, of course, Svante is going to pretend to be thinking about something. There's another sack. Six damage. He would drop to four. Are we also going to see the sack of the Mox Pearl? He would drop to two. Dos. Two points. That's all he's got left. If he sacks the Pearl, it looks like he doesn't, though. So two, three, four Atox into the red zone. Remember, the cards in hand for Svanta, I believe, are a land and a chain lightning. There's nothing he can do, but of course he's pretending to have something. There's the sack of the last Mox. So a 5-6 and a 3-4. That means 8 damage. He would drop to 2. There's nothing Svanta can do. It's going to go to 2. Ay, 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 ay. Are we going to see a burn spell to finish it here? Is Anti going to the finals? Or does he need another turn? That would be risky. If he needs another turn, remember, uh, Svante having chain could put Anti on 4 and then maybe top deck Psionic Blast and it would be a draw? Question mark. It looks like he's got a Psionic Blast though. Oh, he's got an Earthquake. Yep, that does it. Seals the deal. Wow, wow, wow. Auntie going to the finals of the Off Control Cup number five. And in those finals, Auntie will have to uh, battle with his Atox against Brooder bots. So go against the Trikes and the Suchis of Leo Brooder. Here you can see his deck as well. So that's all to come. It promises to be a breathtaking finale of the Often Troll Cup. Now, if you don't want to miss a thing, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, thank you for doing that. And before you go, please take a moment to like, share, and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. Talking about moving forward, you can also consider becoming a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks and find out how you can become a supporter of the show financially as well. It already starts with just $1 a month and for that dollar, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord page and your name will be mentioned at the end of every single video in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ik het als fikker te somber gezien.